What's up, y'all? Welcome back to a brand new video. Um, in this video, I'm going to be continuing my series of ranking other people's top 10 favorite movies. And in this episode, I will be um, reviewing the movies of my father-in-law, J.J. Musgrove. I'm sorry. I'm, I just got so out of breath. I don't know why. So let me catch my breath real quick. Whew. Okay, I'm good. So I am going to be review, reviewing J.J.'s top 10 movies here. Um, so JJ is definitely one of the people that I talk to about movies the most. He gives me a lot of recommendations. Um, we'll talk about different movies. So I was really excited to watch some of the movies that he considers his favorite. Um, like myself, he had a hard time narrowing his list down. So he sent me 10 honorable mentions, which I won't be reviewing, but I am going to mention honorably. Those are Heartbreak Ridge, Training Day, Shawshank Redemption, Inception, Liar Liar, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, Tombstone, The Devil's Own, Lincoln, and 12 Monkeys. So there you go. Those are the honorable mentions. Um, I also just want to say real quick, I try to say this in all these videos, keep in mind that the rankings or ratings, I guess they're not rankings, ratings and reviews um, doesn't mean that I, if they get low, that doesn't mean that I don't think they should be on someone's favorite list or even that it's a bad movie. It's just purely based on my enjoyment of it um, at the end of the day. Um, so if you disagree, oh, well, I guess you don't know how much I enjoyed something. Only I do. So, ha. But it's okay for people to have different favorites. And so I'm not trying to get on anyone's case here. Um, but so I believe for JJ's top 10, I had seen four of them prior to doing this little project. So I'll cover those four first. Um, first off, we have Gladiator. So just one of those movies that has already gone down and will go down in history as just one of the best, right? I think it's a near perfect movie. Um, you have a strong protagonist, a great antagonist, um, a lot of good supporting characters. The cast in this movie is just so good. And so many people um, just give like career performances, especially Russell Crowe. This is, I think this is far and away his best performance. Joaquin Phoenix, I don't know if I'd say it's his best performance, but it's definitely up there, um, which says a lot because he has a lot of really good performances. Um, and I would just say um, the rest, like I said, the rest of the supporting cast, I'm trying to think who all is in it off the top of my head, uh, Jamon Hansu and Richard Harris, people like that, um, just gave Connie Nielsen, I think, is that who plays? Um, I think so. I think she's, I think I just said the right name. Um, but anyways, back to Gladiator. I think that it's just a great movie. Yes, I was right. It is Connie Nielsen. She, um, Gladiator is just a great movie. It's good action, good fight scenes, a heartfelt story. Um, I mean, I think everyone knows Gladiator is a good movie, so I'm just going to leave it at that. I will say, I said I'm going to leave it at that and then say something else. I will say I'm very excited for the sequel that's going to be coming out later this year. Um, I think it'll be really good, and I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. So now we're going to go to Top Gun. Man, so just one of the great action movies, especially of the 80s, um, one of the great action romances just of all time. I think it's one of the all-time best uh, like friends on screen, best friend duos on screen, um, and spoilers for a movie that came out almost 40 years ago. I think, my personal opinion, one of the saddest on-screen deaths that's just very hard-hitting and gut-wrenching and very crucial to the story. It's not just, it didn't feel like just a needless death. It was very crucial to the story and very important. The action is very fast-paced and exciting, exactly how it should be in a movie about these elite naval pilots. Um, the soundtrack is also something that just really stands out. It's stellar. And apparently, I learned this when I was looking it up, um, I always pull up the movie's Wikipedia page while I'm typing my list just so I can, so, just so I can, I remember the movie, I remember what they're about and stuff, but just in case there's anything specific I want to hit, that'll help uh, light it for me. Apparently, I learned that the soundtrack is nine times platinum, which is really cool. Also, this does not affect the score, but I do just want to mention how impressive it it is that they were able to take this movie, make a sequel over 35 years later, and it was more successful commercially and critically, and in my opinion, I think it's better, but I do still think Top Gun, the original, is really good, so I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. All right, now we're going to move to Shutter Island, which I'm so glad that I rewatched this because, like another movie that I'm going to talk about next. It's so much better on the second viewing when you know, um, when you already know the twist, you already know what's happening and you can look for the things hinting towards it. Come on. It's just so good. One of the only things that can beat a Martin Scorsese movie 
is a Leonardo DiCaprio movie. So that's a really strong start. I love Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't, I don't think Leonardo DiCaprio has a bad performance to his name. Um, this is just such a mind boggling movie. One of the best reveals in movie history. And it gives you that classic ambiguous ending of, um, well, I don't want to say it just in case you haven't seen it of does he, does he really know? Or is he trying to get himself killed? I guess that's all I'm trying to say. Not killed, but you know, does he know or doesn't he? I, it's kind of, I don't know. What's not to love about this movie? Um, Mark Ruffalo is really good in it too. So uh, Max von Sydow, Ben Kingsley, all great. Uh, uh, Michelle Williams. What's not to love? Like I said, nine out of 10. So we're off to a really strong start here. Next, we have another movie that is better the second time around, Memento. So apparently JJ just loves movies about people losing their memory. So I bet he loves 50 First Dates too, even though it's not on this list. Um, anyways, Memento, an extremely original premise, really good execution. Um, I think for this movie, the way it's filmed, where it's like happening, like the scenes are back to back, but in reverse order. I think that is just really good for this movie. This is the first big Christopher Nolan movie, and it really sets the scene for how the rest of his films are going to be. Um, Guy Pierce is just spectacular. He gives it his all and it shows. You can see that. I'm glad I rewatched it because it does bump it up from what would have been a seven to a seven and a half. So that's a half point bump. So that's good. Now, the rest of these movies I had not seen until I uh, was doing this list. And the first of which was Tommy Boy. So this is definitely a classic comedy. Um, a lot of the jokes um, have aged well in the sense of they're still funny is what I mean. Um, like sometimes with older comedies, it's not that they aged well, like they're not things that should be said anymore. Like obviously that's an issue sometimes, but just the fact that they're not funny anymore, either because that was the first time that joke was made and now it's been beat to death. Humor has just changed, but I think Tommy Boy is still funny. Uh, Chris Farley and David Spade have just some great chemistry, which results in a lot of those iconic lines um, and iconic moments and good physical comedy as well, which is always a plus. Um, now, I don't think I can go quite as far as JJ did when he told me this is the funniest movie ever. Um, but it is pretty comical, and it earns a 7 out of 10 for me. Next up, we have The Untouchables, um, which has some really strong performances from Kevin Costner, Sean Connery, of course, Bobby De Niro. Uh, this movie overall is pretty solid. I enjoyed it. Um, it's I love a good based on a true story film, even if they're not always accurate, which I, I doubt this one is super accurate. It's probably just the character, a couple of the characters. Uh, my main gripe with this film um, usually, I, like I say, I like to focus, focus on the positive. I told you the positives, good performances, good story. My main gripe though, is that the conclusion felt a little rushed. Um, I typically I'll enjoy, I don't mind if a movie's a little long, I enjoy a good long movie. Rarely do I think a movie needs to be longer than it is, but this is actually one of those examples where I think an extra like 15, 20 minutes really would have served the story really well. Um, dude, just because I do feel like the last 20 minutes of the movie are just like so rushed and almost I don't want to say it's anticlimactic but it's just like a lot of build up for just a very quick rushed conclusion so 7 out of 10 next we have Hoosiers which is obviously just one of those classic sports movies classic basketball movies I'm just gonna get straight to it I didn't really enjoy this movie very much I thought it was extremely boring um, the acting mediocre at best I know um, Gene, Gene Hackman's fine in this movie, Dennis Hopper, uh, is that, yeah, Dennis Hopper got an Oscar nomination for this for playing the the townie dude who loves basketball. I don't understand how. It must have been a weak year. I don't know. Just because I, yeah, I don't know. The pr even the premise of this movie was so so. Because my main complaint with the story is two things, and both have to do with uh, the main character played by Gene Hackman, not necessarily Gene Hackman specifically, but just the character Coach Dale. First, I feel like he never really gets a redemption. Like they talk about, oh, the past mistakes that he made and uh, why he got fired from his last job and why he's not been coaching for so long. I feel like he didn't really get a redemption. Maybe, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it was just for me. He didn't, I don't know. Um, and then the, also the thing, I feel like he didn't really actually matter to the story at all. So I understand that the team was bad. He connects with, what's his name? Jimmy uh, Cheatwood, the guy that's the really good player. And so Jimmy is like, no, I'm only going to play if he's the coach. But like, other than him going over to rebound for him that one time, it's like, I don't think he had any impact on the story. It was just whether or not Jimmy played, they were going to be good. He didn't play, they weren't good. He played, they were going to... It should have been a story about Jimmy. 
it shouldn't have been like I feel like we didn't I didn't really see him coaching at any point to where I was like oh okay now I understand like why he's willing to like fight for this dude and play for this guy I, I, I don't know I just didn't get it um five out of ten now another movie featuring Gene Hackman um we have Unforgiven so now I disliked his character even more in this one but I think that was the point so that's okay um similar to Hoosiers I did think this movie was a little boring but this one was I enjoyed this one more than Hoosiers and I felt like until the final act, it was almost like maybe it was just my viewing of it. I felt like it was almost unclear who I was supposed to be rooting for. Like, yes, obviously, Clint Eastwood's character is the protagonist. Um, obviously, I think everyone in this movie is immoral. And maybe that's the point. But it's like I didn't know who I was supposed to be rooting for. If I was supposed to uh, be rooting for the sheriff, if I was supposed to be rooting for the outlaws, if I was supposed to be rooting for someone else entirely, if I was supposed to be rooting for the women, if I was supposed to, like, I just didn't know. Um, and something else I've realized over the past year or so is that Clint Eastwood is pretty hit or miss for me when it comes to his acting. Specifically, I think he's a great director, a great filmmaker. When it comes to his acting, he's pretty hit, hit or miss for me. This one was a miss. Um, my plus, I really liked Morgan Freeman's character. I thought he was funny. Um, so that's an, that's a plus right there. And But I, I don't know. I also just ended this movie and didn't feel like there was any closure or conclusion. I, I don't know. The f Also, I'll give it another plus just because I don't want to just... I don't want to just like diss it. Um, the bar scene at the end was cool. Uh, also, I'll give it that. Six out of ten. So I know in those last few, we've been on a little bit of a downhill slide there. Um, but we're about to hit a couple high points with these last two. The first of which is Dead Poets Society. Robin Williams is just absolutely fantastic in general, but specifically in this movie. And I think this may hit be his best performance um, that I've seen. Definitely one of the best. Maybe this and Goodwill Hunt Hunting are like his two best. All the young actors are great, and it's shocking to me that out of all of them, only one of them, Ethan Hawke, became like a household name just because I feel like they were all so impressive. Like it wasn't just impressive for child actors, it was impressive, period. Um, I loved seeing, I'll say something that, uh, this isn't a dislike, this is just something I didn't know about the movie. I thought it was going to be more focused just on Robin Williams. I didn't realize, I wouldn't even say he was the main character of the movie. So I think it's interesting that he got a best actor, not a best supporting actor nomination. Um, but it's like, I know the movie was just said, I think on the poster it just says starring Robin Williams. But I think, I don't know, I wouldn't even say he was the main character. The boys were the main character, which again, that's not a complaint. That's just something that I didn't realize. And I really enjoyed it. I think um, how all these different boys were going through different things, uh, coming out of your shell, uh, pursuing something, even if maybe people don't support you in that. Um, just different things like that. It was, it was really good. Um, similar to The Untouchables, this is a movie that I wish was a little bit longer but different than the, the untouchables it's because i felt it felt rushed and maybe um like i didn't feel satisfied this one is just because it was so good i wanted more right i wanted more of the dynamic between uh, mr keating and the students uh, but the ending is just fantastic even though it's a tragic movie it's very inspiring nine out of ten so the other day i pulled a clint eastwood double feature with unforgiven which i said was a low and then this one we're going to end with a high here Gran Torino. Oh my goodness. This movie, I'll admit, going into it, I was not, I was like, I don't know. I, I usually try to go into movies, which I'm not great at this. It's like, I went and saw the second Dune today. I went into it with such high expectations that if it wasn't, if it didn't meet them, I was going to be like, dang, that movie kind of sucked. It did, luckily, so that's good. But I was, my point of, my what I'm trying to say here is, I try to not have too many expectations for a movie just because I don't think it's fair to put my expectations on this movie because then if it does if it's good but it doesn't live up to them then i'm going to be disappointed and think it's bad this one i had expectations and i was expecting to not enjoy it and the fact that i really enjoyed it maybe gives it a higher score than initially i would have thought if i had no expectations but hey who knows who knows this movie just left me jaw dropped um how good it was um clint eastwood just takes this protagonist who is very I'll say morally gray because obviously he says and does a lot of things that he shouldn't but at the end of the day you can tell um, that he has a good heart even though he has a cold persona and says and does a lot of things like I said that he shouldn't but it makes you root for him just throughout the movie and you see 
just this beautiful character development um, and wonderful relationships grow between this man and his neighbors, uh, people that are different than him, people that he initially um, is prejudiced towards and just does not like and has bad experiences with. And it, oh my gosh, the conclusion of this movie is just so, so good. That final act is just spectacular. Um, obviously, like I said, Clint Eastwood was good in this one. This one, like I said, was a hit for me. I thought he was fantastic. But also the supporting cast of actors that were mostly unknown to me, at least, uh, were also just wonderful. Um, and the love we get to see in between these people that's growing is just beautiful. And this movie is in an extremely weird way, very heartwarming. 10 out of 10. So if you're keeping track here of that score, which is very possible that JJ did because he's very good at mental math, um, that is going to bring his total to an 80 out of 100. So 80 will tie him um, for, let's see, I got to think, I got to remember how this works when there's ties. So it's like, that's first, second, they're tied for third. So I guess it'd be tied for fourth um, with Olivia, which I've done. This is going to be the sixth one, and it is tied for fifth, which is there at the bottom. But I'm going to say this. It's an 80 out of 100, which is an average score of an 8 out of 10, which I still think is really, really good. Um, so I really enjoyed these movies. I enjoyed a lot. I have um, I have this running list. It's literally like 700 movies I have a spreadsheet of because I'm an absolute nerd, and I love spreadsheets. That's like movies I want to watch. All of JJ's um, honorable mentions that I did not watch are on that spreadsheet, uh, or that I haven't seen are on that spreadsheet. I've seen a couple of them, um, but they're all on that spreadsheet. I look forward to watching all of them uh, someday. Um, but stay tuned for the next video. I'm currently working. I've already watched, been able to watch a couple uh, movies of my sister-in-law, Miss Maddie Musgrove. Um, I guess it's Mrs. Maddie Musgrove, but I'll call her Miss Maddie. Um, and so I have a few more left on that and then that video will be coming out soon. So stay tuned for that. We'll see how she edges up here. Um, so far everyone has gotten an 80 to an 88 and a half is the highest. So that's a pretty good range. Everybody sent me some really strong movies. Um, JJ, thank you for sending me your list. Um, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next one. I'm not sure if the Maddie video will be my next video. Uh, maybe an episode of pillow talk. I'm not sure. Or it'll be my Oscars video because the Oscars are a week from tomorrow. Um, but anyways, stay tuned for that. Peace.